Greetings and salutations to our fine podcast audience. Welcome to Three Peas in a Pod, episode 232. We made it. We did. We're here in the midst of all the chaos and turmoil in our world. Oh, Which, wow. truth is, I could say that at any point in time yeah, on this podcast, and it true. would be true, but as we're uh, taping, it is especially true. Okay. I was trying to figure out when you said. I thought. See, I'm, 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 I'm more lost now that you said the final. So when you said it the first time, I thought Jason's referencing something specific. Then you said the second part, and I thought, oh, he's just making like a little wise statement about how our world's always. And then you said the final and then thing. And the third thing. You and I'm going now. Person. I'm thinking, which thing is he talking about? Because I can think of a circle. couple things. The answer is yes. Okay. I'm there doing you all go. of that. It's all of them. It's all of that. It's all the stuff. But things we don't. We are don't. certainly in in the news. Oh, as they tend to be Aren't they always with 24 hour news cycles. It's exactly. True. Yes. So the time by the time this comes out, it's probably something else. Mm. I would think so. Another mm. Braves player has gotten hurt and ruined my life. That happens every day. Apparently. Somebody every day. Hurt. I'm guessing someone got hurt. Lots of people. All year long. Everybody's hurt. Man. All year long, the Braves have struggled to we, keep anybody healthy. Yes. We're cursed this year. The only people we can get healthy are people no one wants playing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or suck this year. Yeah, so, yeah. You know? That's right. How, uh, but some, some the MLB has not like increased its season or something. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Mm-hmm. 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 no. It's still too long. Yeah, it is really <laughs> it's long. Really long. I, it's really not long. That's what everyone, all NBA fans say. Is that's why everyone's injured is because they they increased they, no. they only increased the NBA by like four nope. games or something Mm-mm. like that. Mm-hmm. No, well, the reason everybody's hurting the MLB is because they're doing things to their body that they should not be. They doing probably are. Yeah, yeah, that's probably true. We could get into that. That's probably all professional athletes. Probably. I would think so. Yeah. I would think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. At some point. Welcome to your you. Atlanta Braves podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we could do one, Ed, <laughs> me and you. And Nathan could like make fun of us. That's I right. Say, I have nothing to contribute, but I'd be happy to. He would, he would certainly contribute. That's yeah. right. Because he's got always got something to say. I that's, do have something to say. That's the biggest I chaos that in my world. Contribute. All that stuff politically going on. Ah, Whatever. It's going to continually go on. Oh, yeah. So the question is, do you have something to say about today's question? I bet I can find something. Which, by the way, we need questions. So if you have not submitted a question that is burning a hole through your brain. I'd like to say we we don't need questions. No, we don't need questions. (laughs) In terms of... We would really like... If you would like to continue to hear us ramble about things that aren't the uh, Atlanta Braves. In terms of this podcast existence we do need to like the person who sent in to our question form one time when we are on a hiatus Mm -hmm. they said two weeks without a podcast this is making me sad did not give us a question that's right they just told us you're not sad enough to give us a question so if it makes you sad send us a question link is in the description or show notes there you go today's question though is uh, a question about well, there, there's there's a parenting issue in here, and there's a marriage issue in here. So all in one question. All in one question, but a very succinct question. So well, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Those two are often tied together. How, well, that's really that's what this question is about. Question. That's the question. Uh-huh. You're, you're prophetic. <laughs> you ready for the question? I'm just old. You ready for the question? <laughs> you, you are old. <laughs> Should couples who have a child together get married just for the sake of raising them? Should couples who have a child together get married just for the sake of raising them? So, Go. So this is assuming an unmarried couple by the nature of, yes. I think, the question. Yes. Unmarried couple. We've had a, a kid. We've had a kid. Before we got married. Now yes. we're trying to... There's, think, there's, and maybe, there's a bunch of questions before the questions that I just have to let go of. Okay, go. No, I'm no, just going let, go I'm just gonna let you do not... Oh, I thought to, you meant you were going to ask me. No, no, I'm okay. just going to let them go. Okay. So we're assuming in this situation, unmarried couple Mm -hmm. has had a child. Mm -hmm. And what I'm assuming from the question is marriage was not even on the horizon. But now because of the child, because I would assume if you were like, we're engaged to be married and we've had a child, should we go through with the marriage? That doesn't sound like that's the question. Mm -hmm. The question is, mm -hmm. we weren't even thinking that direction. Yes. But now we have a child. Should we begin thinking that? Should having the child then prompt marriage? Right. Who wants to tackle it first? I, well, there's, I there's have a lot of. I would say should is not a good is not yeah, is not the correct. I'm I'm comfortable saying that. I will say this based on the way the question is worded. I thought that last phrase signaled to me when you say in that question just for the sake of raising the child by saying that. To me, that leads me towards, well, no. 
Be, on marriage. Be, on the yes. marriage question, because if you take those two together, in my experience, as a marriage counselor, anyway, uh, if you get married for for that reason, just to raise a child together, that's probably not the wisest reason mm-hmm. to get married. Mm-hmm. Not to say that people who do that don't right. wind up building a healthy marriage. You can, but I think you have to eventually get past because it all comes down to what is marriage, doesn't it? Well, what, what, I, what's it for anyway? Is it's is it just to raise kids? Not if not to be contrary. Okay. Not to be contrary, okay. though that okay. is <laughs> quite my nature. Well, we're gonna get a whole nuanced picture. Uh, mm-hmm. If you remove what most, I guarantee you, everybody who watches this thinks of when they think of marriage, uh, then the question of I have a reason to be married. That mm-hmm. that's that's in the question. I think I have a reason to be married. Mm-hmm. The question came about because they think they have a reason. Mm-hmm. In, the child being the reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the history of mankind, a reason that you had to be married was a good enough reason to be married. Sure. Mm-hmm. That didn't have anything to do with we are sexually compatible. Mm-hmm. We are attracted to each other. We like each other. We know each other. Wow. (laughs) You know, those things were not considered. They just weren't considered. Mm -hmm. And for the history of most of mankind, a reason was often, they told me we're getting married. That is true. And those marriages by and large, and still in lots parts of the world, where that is still the reason, that's enough. And they yes. often work. They do. So here's what I would say. If you think a reason is you think it would be healthier for a child to be married, to be raised by two parents who love the child, you could build a loving relationship with each other for the sake of the child. If yeah. If if that's a good enough if that's the reason, hmm. you could you could and I can make a pretty good sociological case and psychological case that children that are raised by two parents who love the child and care for each other hmm. aren't ugly to each other, <laughs> don't hurt each other the child often is better off. Mm -hmm. So I think... So I'm not saying one way or the other because there are a lot of precursors to this particular situation. You ask three Christians to give you an answer about a situation that has already gone way beyond what, where God... So God has a river over here where (laughs) everything flows this question starts over here. Sure. So I think I, this is where I was. Uh, and so I, I agree with <coughs> both presuppositions here, which I think is the what I hear, what I heard Ed say is there's a presupposition that maybe the idea of chemistry and affection is not a is not the only reason to get married, which I think for that's, most modern well. people, that's their thought of marriage. That's right. Which is which would be for most Modern people would be their reason to say, well, a kid's not enough of a reason. Because if chemistry and affection are the reason, chemistry and affection become the reason to quit. Sure. Oh, yes. So that, right. there's that side. I've heard what Jason is saying is in your experience with people in counseling, mm-hmm. and just, I would assume, outside of even professional counseling, but even pastoral counseling, mm-hmm. There are people who go, well, this is just what we should do, so we're going to get married. We're not even really committed to the idea of marriage, Mm -hmm. but it's like this kind of has to happen Mm -hmm. for the sake of the kid and that that will somehow do something. Um, Because I will say, there's also evidence to say that you staying married for the 18 years the kid is in your house and then you immediately get divorced does... Uh, in t- it, the, it does a, a damage as well. Yes, so, it does. So I, I did not mean just for I know, the, I know you I, didn't, but I'm trying to... Bring, I'm talking about building a marriage for the sake of the kid, which is what, if you want to build a marriage, and that lasts until the kid's dead. Yes, so I think that's what I'm trying... <laughs> I'm trying to bring both things in so that you hear what's yes. existing in the tension in mm-hmm. the middle. That's right. 
Which, and this is where I said at the beginning, I don't think should is the right question because, and Ed pointed at this, you're already sitting, if you are a believer, and that's why you're, you're already sitting outside the, the realm of should at this point. And what I mean is in the, in the ideal, mm. that there is God's ideal, which is the way it would go, is that a man and a woman would be married before they have sex. That that is the way that, they, and then they would be lovingly committed. Sex would only exist within the, the context of that marriage between that man and that woman. That sex would produce a child that then would be raised within the context of that loving union, right? So that's the ideal. But, and I don't remember who I heard say this. I want to say it's Andy Stanley, but he may not be the right person to say this. But when you're sitting in the, the world, you always have to do both of, I live in the real world. Right. That's right. But I That's still right. keep my eyes on God's ideal. That's I don't right. drop either one. That's right. I'm able to both live in, okay, we're already outside of what God's ideal would be. Mm-hmm. Right. But living in the land of, so now I got to jump up to God's ideal immediately, may not be helpful. And this is where I would, in my mind, am trying to, help us bridge the ideas here, which is, it really depends on who the other person is in this relationship. You may have the desire to do what Ed said. Mm -hmm. I want to jump up to God's ideal. I know we didn't start this Mm -hmm. the way it should be, but, and we very much believe this, God can resurrect anything. God can transform anything. If both of you are like, hey, we are committed to one another and we're committed to this kid because we're committed to God, right? Mm -hmm. God can make that happen, and you can make enough progress to move up to the ideal. That's right. But whether you're the man or the woman in the situation, coming to the other person who's saying, marriage ain't on my horizon, Mm -hmm. I don't think this is anything I want, and saying, Mm -hmm. hey, let's just, I know, let's, you know, and now I'm trying to, like, compromise and make a deal with you. Well, if we get married, we'll work this and we'll do this. Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think that, and I'll say this, Take kid out of the equation. If that's your approach to marriage as a single person in general, which is I just got to find a body. <laughs> right. I just got to find a, somebody and we're not at least desiring the same thing, which is union with one another, with God at the center of it. And that's the beginning. You're never going to get to God's ideal. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I hear the question and I hear, should all people... <laughs> who have kids together get married for the sake of the kid, I would say should's not the right question. Right. I think the right question is go back to the real for a moment and say, with this real person mm-hmm. that I've had a kid with, are we both desiring this? Because it is going to be hard work. You mm-hmm. have instantly made, and I think, I would say, I think secular or Christian uh Anyone who is helping you, counselor or whatever, would say this situation is now more complicated than a normal, uh, I don't know what the right relationship, I don't know what the mm-hmm. union would be because there's a third person involved well, in the situation. E- yes, right. Every time I, and if we just take marriage, sex, babies, all of that off the table, again, I'm assuming the person asked us and maybe they asked every other podcaster on the thing for all I know. <laughs> But they asked us, hoping we'd give them the Christian viewpoint. It doesn't matter whether it's, we could take money and say, when you step outside of God's plan for money, it it makes things more complicated. It doesn't make it impossible. Mm -hmm. You can always get back to where you should be, but every step away from God's, what God has said is the way to do it, complicates things immensely. And deciding over here that I want to get here and asking God to help you, he will help you. But the complication is still there. Yeah. You've got to work all yes. the way through the complication. Mm-hmm. And yes, it would be very complicated now that you already have a child and decide, I want to get married. It will also be very complicated to decide I have a child with this person and we're not going to be married. Oh, yes. That also will be exceptionally complicated. Mm -hmm. The complication is built in. Yeah. This situation has Mm -hmm. immense complication built in. And that's what I I think I alluded to it. For me, it comes back to the question of what's marriage intended to be? Yes. In God's, you know, God's viewpoint, what is marriage supposed to be? And, 
and we get hints of this in the scripture. I'm mm-hmm. not sure we get a direct 100, you know, black and white answer, sure. but I think we get hints in the scripture that it is meant to be, as we've been saying around here, to use that language, a faithful witness That's right. Right, to King Jesus, to the gospel and those things. And so I think for two people who, who look at it that way and say, well, we would like to do that. Right. We would yes. like our union yes. to become a faithful witness. And both parties say that to, and then that's the commitment. Because here's the deal. That's what every couple, you would hope, Christian couple coming together in marriage would say to one another. They It's a covenant I enter into. That's right. right. It's a choice that I make. That's, that's right. right. So I make this choice so that we can come together and and witness to, 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 to King Jesus in this way. And we're going to build our marriage on that foundation. Well, if that's where you start, then... Go absolutely. I think that's wise. I, I think do that's too. God yes. honored God, and like you said, Ed, God will help you if you go. But f- to come at it and go, well, all right, we'll do it for the kid, right? I, I I think you're starting from a very shaky foundation already. Doesn't mean you can't eventually get there, right? But again, it adds complication. All right. All right. So I like right? I, I like the the angle you went at there, and I I, I want to. I want to just double down a little on that, okay. which is to say, should I get married for the sake of the kid? And maybe this is where in my head, just yeah. I was thinking on just what, what do you mean by should? Mm-hmm. And I think this is the difficult part. I think I would say the same thing. And I had people, so my wife and I, we started dating when we were 15, got married when we were 19. And I've had a lot of people ask me, like, well, when did you know you should get married? And I said, there was no should behind it. Yeah. I said, it seemed right to us. Yeah. And they go, well, how did you know, like, you just loved her so much she was the one? I said, well, I don't know. we just been together and it felt weird. Like, I had no reason to stop. Mm-hmm. And I had... <laughs> Always assumed that part of my life would be this part because, and I did grow up in a Christian context. So, in my mind, this is part of it. We, get, I get married somehow when I'm with somebody for the sake of saying I want to honor Jesus in this relationship. Okay. So, to say the reason you should get married is because you just really, really like someone and love them, <laughs> right? Or, and often this happens in Christian context, I just really want to have sex and I was told I couldn't outside, right? Mm -hmm. Or we have a kid together. Anything that's not, I want to live out the gospel Mm -hmm. of I want to lay down my life for my spouse Mm -hmm. like Christ laid down his life for the church, which is what Paul says it is. That's right. right? Or we submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, right? That is the basis of Christian marriage. Now, here's the part, and this goes back to the thing we said at the beginning. I think almost everyone has to admit that's not the reason almost any of us got married. Nobody right. starts there. Yes. So, so here's, this is where I was trying to get to. Mm-hmm. Is, I shouldn't say nobody. No, I nobody. didn't start there. I did not start well, there. Well, and even if you start there and you believe you're starting there, what that means and what that looks like, you grow Changes. in that. That's right. You have Absolutely. To. You but, have to. But my point is yeah. the should of... The basis of our marriage is going to be a kid, mm-hmm. or the basis of our marriage is going to be our love for one another. Mm-hmm. Neither one of those, I think. And I think in our modern world, the my love for, and she just means so much mm-hmm. to me. She's my one. She's my soulmate. He, you know, whatever. He mm-hmm. completes me. Yeah. That, most people say, that's a solid basis. I was at a, marriage, a wedding recently where someone said, love is easy, like is hard liking and that was and it was a it was a non-believer mm. who said that like like this chemistry this affection for one another you have to work at that and it's hard and that was elevated everyone was like that's amazing mm. you know because that's the basis of a marriage is really being best friends and liking one another maybe you should redefine what love means uh, i get i agree <laughs> i agree but that was that yeah. was a very modern context yeah i know what i you got to say something yeah, someone's got to get up and do something. <laughs> I mean, they asked you to stand up. Words are going to come out. That's right. <laughs> I think if you're already living in this real, mm-hmm. which is I'm I'm off from from where where uh, Jesus would have me start this relationship. Mm-hmm. You got to set your sights on the ideal a little mm-hmm. and say, Am I ready with this person? To lay down my life like Jesus laid down his life for them. Mm-hmm. I get that's not where every marriage starts. But hopefully any Christian marriage is discipled into that at some point. Yeah. 
And I would encourage you that that would be your <coughs> process behind this beyond is it what's best for the kid? As, as Ed has already said, there's a lot of sociological and psychological research to say that that is the healthiest environment. But there's also assumptions that go into that too, which is where did those relationships start and all of those. There's, sure. there's other contextual factors that go into sure. those things as well. So I think we you have to, you're at a place where you have to look at this other person and, and you are trusting that they mean it to you as well, mm -hmm. which is, I'm willing to lay down my life for you. Mm -hmm. And I want to do this for the sake of Jesus. Uh, mm. And as you hear, because we're all having this conversation here, and part of, part of our complication in having this is we don't know who you are. And, we, and it would be a little easier if we could have you as a person, this idea that I can fully make decisions based on the ideal I think God did not just give us an ideal. We live in a real world that is broken by sin and complication. We are supposed to hold the two mm -hmm. and say, I'm trying to move towards God's ideal for my life. But the practical steps of that have mm -hmm. to be where I am right now in comparison to where he is. And so mm -hmm. that would be my encouragement to you is, you know, to look at those ideals of Christian marriage of, mm -hmm. I want to lay down my life for this person. Yeah. Because uh, I think what I was getting at, I, I'm, I'm still working out how I was, the thought in my head, how I wanted to say it. But I think what I was tr trying to get at is if, the, and you talked about the foundation of your marriage is, you know, I'm just going to raise this kid. And that's how I read that question. My fear for a couple like that is if you don't continue to keep your eyes on the ideal, you don't grow into that and get discipled into that. It, what will happen is what I have seen in the marriage counseling world is there are so many couples that walk into my office post raising children mm -hmm. and they are struggling in their relationship with one another because they never got farther than that. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they started at, I love this person. You're my soulmate. Kid came along and it was like, oh, we're here to raise this kid. And they lost sight of some of that for a while. And, it, and, and basically what happened is they just shifted their reason for being married. Well, yeah, and and now it's all about raising this kid. And my point is, if it if that's it, and you don't tend to that foundational mm -hmm. thing that we're talking, the ideal that we're talking about, you're going to have to eventually address that because part of you know being being that family is your kids hopefully grow up and leave at one point in 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 that process, and that role that you've based that marriage on changes and shifts or goes away in some parts, in some ways. And so now you, you see what I'm saying? The foundational yes. reason why we're together is, is, is not solid. And so every time it moves, we get shaky. Yeah. And so that's what I wind up dealing with in marriage counseling is couples who are looking at each other and, and to your point, I don't like you anymore. Not only do I not yes. like you, I don't think I can love you in the way because that I, I don't like because you. I don't like you. And so now we've got to start from almost from square one and go, okay, now what is our foundation? Mm -hmm. And do we even want to build a foundation that will support a relationship of marriage between us? Well, and I think the the word support there is huge because mm -hmm. what has happened in our modern world is we have decided maybe marriage. I think people do this in parenting too. Mm -hmm. I need a vessel to, to contain all the longing mm -hmm. in my soul, all the desire within me, my need for affection, my need to be loved and desired and wanted. Marriage is not a big enough vehicle to contain all of that. Yep. Neither is you, your four-year-old is cert will be crushed by putting all of that on them. And if you raise a healthy 18-year-old, they will crush you yes. yes, because they they will not love you as much as you love them. That's right. They exactly. will, if, they, if they're healthy, mm -hmm. they will walk away from you and find somebody they love more. Yeah. And yes. that's what you hopefully want for them. Mm -hmm. I personally think the problem with what you described, I think you're absolutely right. I've seen the same people. The basis of the marriage often is without knowing because it's the, it's the water our, we swim in when it comes to relationships in our culture, at least for the last 70 years, mm -hmm. I'm 65, has been every relationship is about me and my needs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I get married because this person makes me feel a certain way or I feel a certain thing toward them. And so we get married. And then 
way too often this happens. I used to think it happened more with moms. I think it happens with moms and dads equally. I now have a kid and this kid surplants the person that I was married Mm to as I've, I mean, I've openly heard moms and dads both say, uh, nobody comes in front of my child. Yes. Mm -hmm. No one. And the spouse knows. And they would even openly say, my spouse does not, my my kid comes first. I'll say this. I said that one time in a message and someone confronted me about that. Oh, yeah. That you said the reverse. So you said said, the reverse. You said my wife comes before my kids. I said me and my wife were first and then I'm supported. And they said, wow. You you know, they questioned my fitness as a parent. So here, (laughs) now I get this. And if I hopefully do a good job, if I really do love this kid, I have to help them become a healthy adult that has boundaries with me. Yes. They have to have boundaries with me or they become too codependent, codependent. on me. Yes. And if I raise one, then they're going to leave. And now I've spent a long time offending this spouse mm-hmm. by telling them, you if I had more than one kid, you're not even number two. That's right. If I had three, you, you might be four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, So no wonder we don't like each other. I've told you for 20 years Mm -hmm. that you weren't close to, I mean, you're in top five. I guess if you like that, you're in the top five, Mm -hmm. but you're not number one. No wonder. But the problem was the same. My motivation was what fed me. Yeah. Well, and I I didn't go into either of these relationships. Marriage or parenting. Marriage or parenting. The, the, thing was what makes me have the buzz. Mm. And that's where I was going into if if two people really and and I know this is a long shot mm. would say for the sake of this kid mm. we will do what's best. Well, best means I'm going to have to love you more than I love the kid cuz the kid can't swim in waters where they're the most important person in the family. Yes. It it hurts them. Yes. If it's they, too much responsibility. It's too them. much responsibility. Now, can somebody genuinely do that who has already started the thing way over here? They could. The two of them could, with God's help, get back on track. It's just uber complicated. Yes. But not doing it. Is, is also, also complicated. uber complicated. Well, mm-hmm. maybe this is this. We is don't we're... have an answer for you that it's going to be easy. Choose yeah. your heart. That's what yeah, we're saying. That's right. That's well, right. That ulti- which, by the way, that's a whole separate thing. But I just want to say this on top. All of life, and I've told this now. Now that I've been leading leaders, I said everything in leadership. But I'd say parenting is. I'd say life is this way. You're choosing your heart. That's every right. decision has has a yes. Everything you say yes to. You say no to something else. Not just one. You're saying no to everything Everything else. else, right? right. One yes is no to everything else. And whatever you're saying yes to is going to be difficult, is going to be complicated, is going to be hard, which is why you get to a point where you have to say, I have my sights on something bigger than the yes. I'm saying yes to ultimately God. I'm saying yes to what he would call me to do because he is the only vessel that is big enough to contain all human longing and desire, rightly ordered then, I put my children and my wife or you know your husband in that context, mm-hmm. right? And I'm able to actually love them properly through my loving God because he's the only one. So then when mm-hmm. I go and I say, you know, my kid's not, oh, Oops, I'm sorry, sorry, I just punched you in that. It's okay. My kids, <laughs> my kids uh, aren't fulfilling my desires. Mm-hmm. I go. I said this to a parent recently. I said, well, what do I do when my child's really disappointed me? I said, the first thing you do is, and if it's not like a sin issue yeah, that you're yeah. correcting, so the first thing you do is you never tell them. I said, <laughs> if they are making a healthy decision, you go, you find someone else that you, you come tell me. You come to me, another parent, and say, you know what? I'm really disappointed. Yeah. I was hoping they would turn out like this. Or even your spouse being willing to say, I thought our marriage was going to look different than it is. It's not their job to hold all of your disappointments and all the things you. It's held on different to. if you know Jason and I have been friends a long time, and if it, Jason at some point told me he was going to do something, and he doesn't do it, sure, then it's reasonable for him to say, "Hey, man, I'm really disappointed. That's you right. didn't do what you told me." Yes, but for me, after a long time of being friends. He hasn't said anything, and I just expect something. Right. And I get disappointed. Well, I'm just saying, that ain't on him. 
That's right. That ain't Expectations on Expectations have to be stated and agreed upon. The other thing I was going to say is if there are people <coughs> listening, which, I mean, maybe so, and you're not married, and we keep talking about this idea of God's ideal, and I think, unfortunately, in the American the American church, maybe all over, maybe, I don't know, I've never been anywhere else, <laughs> that to be not long enough to be able to know what anyone else is teaching. We have basically, God's ideal has been boiled down to as long as it's a heterosexual couple who wants to get married, mm. we're good with that. And the idea, and that's unfortunate because ultimately we've just decided we're going to negate other th- that mostly what marriage is is about negating other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's really important to understand when we say, well, then what would the foundation be? You know, the reason that for Christians, the reason marriage has persisted even to a point where you know it's not like we need to grow the population any. It's not this is necessarily the problem we're trying to solve. It's because ultimately what God is trying to do is to build a community of people. He's trying to gather a people, not just individual people, a people who could live together with him at the center. And a central part of that is when, you know, like in a church like ours, those are broken down into smaller units that are called families. And the reason you would want a Christian marriage is you would want two people who are trying to have interactive life with God on their own now can find out how to do that in this kind of microcosm, right? This, as you said, Mm -hmm. a witness, an example. Together, Mm -hmm. we are going to die to ourselves, right? And live together in such a way that we put Jesus at the center. Then you would say, not because we just need to grow this family, or because, you know what? I'd like to have little kids running around who look like me. Yeah. To have this idea of saying, we then want to disciple other people in a context that, as Ed's already said, is healthy. We have these children, right? And maybe we even adopt children, right? If that doesn't, if we can't biologically have children, we bring children in to say, I want you to experience life in the kingdom through me, through this experience of two people at the at the head of the family who are dying to one another. And then they extend that to you with the hope that you get brought in. So if you're a single person, I know a lot of single people go, I don't know why I'd ever get married. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'd ever have kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you know, I know married people, right? They used to call them dinks, dual income, no kids, Mm -hmm. right? We're both working, we're married people, right? And that's where you're, I don't even know why I'd have kids. There is a Christian answer to that question. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, once again, I don't know that it's a ultimate should that you, you know, because people I know have been beaten down with that. Yes. But there is an answer to the question, which is why, it's because there is something about living out the ideal of God in a real world, in my body, well, in my relationship. Jason, Jason talked about this a little bit. This is a whole other thing, and I don't want to. It, we we just don't need to go into it on this question. There is a visible picture yes. of God's love for humanity that He intends between a man and a woman who are married to each other. Yeah, and. In the very earliest verses of the Bible, when he says he created the male and female who created them in our image, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it's not the male that was made in his image and then the, the woman was made in the male's image. Right. It, they, they together yes. represent the image of God. Mm-hmm. And Paul Skip says one. there is something about that that we miss out on in that covenant relationship that Father, Son, and Spirit have with each other that operates, that also exist in a marriage. And, you know, I, I just don't think it's wrong that the church for hundreds and thousands of years now have called marriage a sacrament. It means right. where mm-hmm. it's where we... You take something ordinary. Yeah, right? and it, it gets, the divine gets attached to it. Mm-hmm. Uh it, it, nothing has grown me in 45 years like my marriage. Nothing. Yeah. I'd agree. Yeah. And I would say, too, because, again, we don't know who asked the question. We don't know what context you're coming from. No. Nope. If you are already married mm. for the sake of your kids and you're having difficulties and yes. questions, um, the same thing, I would say the same thing to you. Go back to the foundation and yes. find out, are, are we really desiring to build a marriage on these ideal foundations of God and His kingdom that we just talked about? And let that be your starting point. Get some help and decide, if is that where we're both headed? 
Well, to, and yeah. are we are we intending to go there? And, and, you, to, pro- and you probably should talk to somebody yes, personally. That's what yes. I mean by help. Being, <laughs> being pastored by three guys from afar in a video, yeah, and thinking that you can take one little thirty minute conversation and uh, take a little bit of God's will and apply yeah. it, and it just go. Mm-hmm. It's <clears throat> somebody needs to know you. Yes, and I mean, if you want to call and reach, talk to one of us yeah. so that we can. We can get a fully fleshed version, and you can talk back and forth. We'd love to do that, but yeah, it's this is complicated. However, you're going to go at yes, it. It is, and that's why I say you need help <coughs> to walk this path in community with God's yes. people, so that you can come to the place where you are building the, your life on the foundation, whether it includes marriage or not. Right? Yeah, because you can do that. So, all right. Enough of that. We've gone a little bit over our normal time. Yeah. So we did have a lot to say about that. We did. So happy about that. Continue to send in those questions. Links in the description. And we will see you next week.